You right, know? right. But if Venom was on there, mm-hmm. Venom 25 going digital, me and you are having a different conversation. No, because I'm losing my crap too on that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I'm going to rephrase this question. If Daredevil. I, I, yeah, forget Hey, that. everybody. Welcome to Comics with Bueller. As always, I'm Bueller. Today is episode 78 of the new Copy and Comic Show. As you can see, I'm not alone. I got my good friend Bob here with me. Bob, how are you? You know, I'm, I'm struggling today, but I'm here, and I'm going to make it work. You are <laughs> kind of struggling today. I am. You woke up like a few minutes ago. Yeah, I did. Coming on over here, kind of in a little saucy mood. Saucy, a little foggy. We've got some topics to discuss today. Yeah, you yeah. might just kind of lose it. I just might, man. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> calm down there. Calm down. All right, calm all down. right, all right, all right. But you know what? We always start off with the coffee that we drink. Mm-hmm. And uh, unfortunately, I don't think either of our coffee is brought to you by Mocha Express. Not this time. The official coffee shop <laughs> of Comics with Bueller. I am drinking special coffee. It's... Tastes a lot like cherry soda, but it does have caffeine and it's cold. But I'll I'll go ahead and try out. Yeah, that's good coffee. I like it a lot. What about you? What are you drinking? I am drinking just straight black coffee that I poured on the way out of the door when I walked out, and it's uh, I think it's Dunkin' Donuts, just regular yeah. black coffee. Man, this show's really going downhill. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. <laughs> We're trying to hold it together. Things are different, you know, and uh, it's just. Uh, <laughs> I, I gotta get the Mocha Express. It's just it's it's so weird going there and like sitting in your car and waiting for your order. Yeah, yeah. And it's just not the same. So when when that changes and we can go in and hang out and get that coffee and stuff and uh, I'll be right back to it because I've been drinking a lot of like just regular coffee from making from the pot. It's not the same. It's not the same. It's at all. not the same. Not I, the same. I need some good stuff. Yeah. But anyway, cherry soda flavored coffee. That's what I got. There that's you what go. We're drinking. <laughs> uh, I want to say thanks everyone who gave us the well wishes from last week because we yeah. were back last week. It was so cool to be back and talk with everybody and talk with Bob and uh, yeah. you know thank you everyone who left a comment and said thank you for us coming back. We we missed it. Yeah, absolutely. I missed it hugely, and I'm so glad here I am again. Yeah. It's the following week. We're on a roll now. Two weeks in a row. We're, we're trying. <laughs> we're trying our best. Still no new comics. We'll address that in a little bit. Yeah. Um, I want to say thank you to our patrons who are supporting the channel. Um, if you'd like to support the channel, the price is three ninety nine. The price of one comic book a month uh, helps keeps the lights on. Helps pay the bills. I say this all the time. Bob has a real job. Uh, you know, he drives a, a nice car that they provide for him, which is fantastic, you know, and stuff. And uh, so I, all my money's come from this thing right here. Yeah. So it's a little bit different, but you know what? It, every penny helps. So thank you so much to the people who are uh, supporting the Patreon. We'll list the names at the end of this video. So thank you. Um, we are going to keep on doing things a little bit differently because it's just a different format that yeah. we have to adjust right now because the information just isn't available. So we're breaking it up into segments. And we'll leave timestamps down below if you want to check out the different segments. But uh, some of the regular things that we always do is first five and final five. Mm-hmm. We're still doing those. We're incorporating the preview of the previews of the week into this, so it's an all-in-one. And also our picks of the week, which that's just outrageous this way. I mean, <laughs> we, we got some tremendous picks. We uh, we're going to hit on a topic this week. We're actually going to talk about Marvel's decision to release digital comics only mm-hmm. on a certain titles and not even consider making them physical copies at all. It's just going to be digital releases for a certain amount of books, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. And then we're going to get to your comments that you guys left us last week about the comic shop experiences and stuff like that. And then some news. We'll kind of hit that at the end. Sound good? Sounds good to me. All right. Uh, First off, let's start off with our first five. Sure. Go ahead. You're on the board. Yep. So the first one up there is Secret Wars number eight, variant cover. Of course, I have to have some Doctor Doom up there. Uh, my next one is Lobo's Back number one. I like that cover. And then we have um, Batman number 403. Saw that one. I had to pick it up. Then we got uh, X Men number 317, The Phalanx Covenant. A little bit of a shiny bit of cover there. Your name is on the back of that one. You like that one? That's very nice. There we go. Just so you know it's yours? Yes, just so I know it's yours. Afraid I'm going to take it? Nope. (laughs) And the last one is Incredible Hulk 393. 
the, the green foil cover. There's my first five. I like that. You got some nice shiny stuff on yeah, there. You know, showing you know. that off. You got shiny books too, apparently. Just, just a bit of shine, you know. There you go. Not bad. <laughs> Glad you brought your hat this week. Why, thank you. I, I remembered to pick it up on the way out the door, even though I was like scrambling because I just woke up. <laughs> yeah, but you forgot your glasses. Dude. I did. I did. I always forget something. <laughs> That's all right. Okay, I got my five. Yeah, yeah. All right. This one's really cool. This is Alex Ross. Superman uh, Kingdom Come Special. I'm not too familiar with the book, but the cover is really great. Anything I love that cover. This is one of my favorite uh, Todd McFarlane covers, Amazing Spider-Man number 313, with the lizard on the front. Love that one. Um, this is a True Believers, Carnage USA. This one was only a buck, and this is the famous Clayton Crane cover of Carnage mm. from that limited series. Yeah. Uh, and then we have some old school goodness. This is Millie the Model number 139. Look how fancy they're out on the town. You know, I think something's going to happen. There we go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and the very last one is Deadpool number 11. It's some unicorn and rainbow goodness. You know, when I saw this uh, Deadpool picture on my preview video, I was like, I got to get this comic because I like unicorns and, and, and rainbows. So, I mean, uh, there you go. I didn't care for the book that much, but... Rainbows yeah. and unicorns all day long, right? Absolutely. He's got a secret room that you haven't seen yet in the back. It's just nothing but rainbows and unicorns. You're not it's allowed to go great. back there. <laughs> how, how do you know that? Because you've taken me back there. <laughs> oh, okay, next subject. <laughs> uh, but one of the things I thought was really cool is you showed Millie the model. Yeah. And uh, one of my favorite comic book artists of all time, Roy Thomas, mm -hmm. that's where he got to start was in Millie the model. Oh, nice. Didn't Stan Lee do? Yep. Yeah. Is that his creation? I don't know if it was his creation, but it was definitely a timely comic before they Because it's Millie the model, and you know how he always did the characters with the same you know, letter for exactly. his last name? I don't know. We'll have to I look that up. Probably. Maybe we should know stuff like that. We probably should. Yeah, but whatever, right? <laughs> you don't need to know a lot about comics to be on this show. No, but I think it's really cool that you showed that comic. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. I think I got it from Robert Galvin sent it to me like last year uh, with a bunch of really cool stuff, so... Bunch of older stuff, so I like it. Nice. So let's move on to our next segment, the previews of the week. We're going to show you guys the books that are coming out this week. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, this week is smaller than last week, and it's only DC Comics. And these are physical copies yeah. of the books that are going to be available at comic shops. If you have some that are open, if they do curbside pickup, whatever they're doing, these can be available at your LCS on Tuesday or Wednesday. I don't know exactly what they're release date is on there because I think um, I've heard some of them let them go on Tuesday and some are just waiting till Wednesday so yeah anyway these are the ones that are coming out this week so I will run down the first two because there's only four <laughs> and then Bob will do the next two uh, the very first one coming out we have Harley Quinn number 72 a writer Sam Humphreys art by Sammy uh, Basri I believe and we have a variant cover by Frank Cho, and this one is $3.99 cover price. Next one by DC is Justice League Odyssey, number 20. The writer is Dan Abnett, and the artist is Will Conrad. And we have a variant cover by Scon, I believe. And this one also has a cover price of $3.99. Bob? The final two is up to you. There we go. <laughs> so the next one we have is Lois Lane number 10, uh, written by Greg Rucka and art by Mike Perkins. Uh, we have a variant cover also by Tula Lote, and the cover price on that is $3.99. Next we have Metal Man number 6, written by Dan DiDio. Is that true? Wow. Uh, uh, oh, art by Shane Davis, and a variant cover by the legendary George Perez. Cover price on that one is also $3.99. Yeah, so that's it. That's all you get this week. <laughs> Four books. Every one of them has a variant cover. Yeah. Why not, right? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's all the physical copies of books that are coming out. There might be some smaller independent publishers that are sending directly to comic shops, but not every comic shop carries those or has access to those as well. Um, I try to do a little bit of work to make sure that these are the ones that are available nationwide. And from what I've been told by other comic shops in the area and around the states, that these are pretty much the ones that they're guaranteed to have in uh, this week. So there you go. Uh, let's switch to the next segment. There we go. Which is our picks of the week. Top 10 for two, I don't know, <laughs> picks of the week. And uh, you know what? I'll let you go first with your 
Pick. How many do you have this week? One. One. Hey, that's great. <laughs> it's, it's a pick. Of what, the a, week. what a great segment. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Bob. <laughs> and uh, my, my pick of the week is actually that Metal Men number six, and uh, that the variant cover by George Perez. How how can you how can you beat that? You got a legend creating a variant cover. I'll I'll buy into that every time. That's awesome, man. I, I saw that. It looked pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And I'm not too uh, into the Metal Men series. I think it's a either 10 or 12 issue uh, miniseries. Yeah. Um, I guess it's now my. Let me show you how the pick of the week works. All right. You ready? Yeah. All right. My pick of the week. <laughs> Harley Quinn number 72. Look at Harley looking so good on the front of this cover. But that's not the reason why I'm picking this book. I'm picking the B cover by none other than Frank Cho. Look at the white and look how she's sitting on top of that thing. It's so nice and wonderful. This is my pick of the week. Hey, that's how you do it. <laughs> That was awesome. <laughs> so that's it. There's no other ones. The other, other two are just like, honestly, Lois Lang, eh, whatever. And honestly, uh, Harley Quinn, I don't really care either, to be honest. But you know what? The show cover's not bad. It's yeah, a little, yeah. it's kind of cool looking. So. That's for sure. But I think both of our picks of the week are based on cover. Yeah, absolutely. Not really based on story or whatnot. Exactly. And that's usually not the case. Usually not. Yeah. So there you go. That's those two segments. Easy to do. Let's take that. That's gone. <laughs> Throw that out of there. <laughs> um, but let's go ahead and, like I said, we're going to do things a little bit different. We're going to talk about a, a different topic than we were, uh, talked about last week because this came up and it was kind of interesting. And it kind of goes in with what we just did. We covered the new books that are coming out sure. this week. So the topic that I want to discuss is there was news that came out this past week about Marvel going digital. And not only going digital, but choosing a handful of titles and only going digital with those titles that are current books that are in the process of a story arc or a limited series, those are done. They they are literally cutting down that book. There's no more issues coming out. They are switching to digital only. Mm -hmm. And let me give you a rundown of the books that are supposed to come out this week that would be physical copies if this wasn't the case, but now these are all digital copies. We have Ant-Man number four, Avengers of the Wastelands number four, Ghost Spider number nine, and Ravencroft number four. We will not see physical books of those titles mm-hmm. or any of the other issues that come after that, whether it's a limited series or the series gets canceled. So you will have Ant-Man one, two, and three physical copy, right. and you will not be able to get issue number four ever. Right. Unless you pick up a trade paperback for the whole series. That's what they're doing uh, this week. And then next week, there's four more titles. Let me just get those out of the way. We have 2020 Ironheart number one. Mm-hmm. That's a brand new series that's just going digital. Marvel Spider-Man The Black Cat Strikes number four. That's after the video game, I believe. Sure. So that series no longer will have physical copies. And then Hawkeye Freefall number five, which is a lot of people like that one. I like that myself. And that's surprising because I know that title made some people upset. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is Star number four, which is their newest superhero that they introduced not very long ago. And now they're going to an all digital format for her current series, which is a little surprising. And those digital copies will come out May 20th. So when you saw that news, and you had a different reaction than I thought you would, to be honest, because we talked a little bit before we started, yeah, yeah. Um, what is your, your initial thoughts, seeing that Marvel is literally taking these titles and said, we're scrapping physical media, mm-hmm. and we are going digital only for these titles? Right. Okay, so, um, so I'll just let you know right off the bat, I both love and hate this news. Uh, I'll tell you the p- part that I hate about it is that I'm not going to be able to uh, get my Ant-Man books going forward. Um, the the uh, Hawkeye Freefall, I really loved that that uh, miniseries. Yeah, I'm a completionist. I'd like to have the whole set. Uh, and then also Star, I was really starting to get into that. I, I liked you know where they were going with that particular character. And so, yeah, there's a piece of me that doesn't like it because I'm not going to be able to get physical copies of those. But having said that, uh, there is a piece of this that I love. This is something that I think Marvel should have done a long time ago. Uh, you don't have to put out a thousand and one books every week and flood the market, right? Trying to get people to buy just your stuff, uh, and you know, creating this huge, huge uh, um, mix of you know different titles, many of which uh, are not really making them a lot of money. Yeah. And I would much rather them come out with with titles. Uh, and let those titles be bought digitally 
uh, and let the market bear whether or not this needs to be put into you know actual physical print and that way you're not you know making so really when it comes down to this is a good first step I think <laughs> Really? Yeah. Uh, but I would much rather have not 2,500 Spider-Man books. Yeah. And, you know, or 2,500 X-Men books. Uh, I'd rather have a nice set of titles that I can rely upon that's going to come out every month and not have to be flooded with all kinds of stuff. And so putting some of it on digital, I think, is a good move. Now, it's a little contradicting what you say because they're still releasing it. It's still coming out. Yeah. It's not like they're canceling these books. I oh, know. I'm not. They're, 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 these books are still coming out, so mm -hmm. they're still going to, they may not share the shelf space with the other books in the store, but these books are still available. So there's no, uh, there's no cutting down the amount of titles that are coming out. It's just taking some and releasing them in a different way on the same day. Right. So the content is still there to consume. It's just coming out in a different way. I mean, do you see the... the I, I, I do, I do. Yeah. But, you know, when, when it comes to walking into a comic shop, you know, especially for those newer people that are coming in, yeah. the thousand and one choices that are sitting there, uh, let's let's take some of those, those shelves off the book and let the market bear whether or not something needs to be put on digital. Because there's, you know, both Marvel and DC, you know, for a number of years have put out titles that are just being supported by the other books. Yeah. They don't really bear, they don't may make them any money. And I'd rather see those books taken off and let 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 the fans decide whether or not something's going to be put in print. That's just my personal opinion on it. Uh, I just think that there's way too many books uh, that come out that don't need to. Yeah. Um, I think you're right in the sense that, you know, there's probably a lot of titles that, that there shouldn't be that many titles out for a certain character like Spider-Man, all the video game ones or whatnot, and all the other stuff. It's a little, uh, it's, it's flooding the market with stuff like that. Um, but I do look at this, my initial reaction to seeing this was like, this might be the first step for them testing the waters to make this a normal thing. What mm -hmm. if it comes out and there's a title that you want? None of these titles on here are really grabbing my attention. Like, oh man, I'm, I'm not, there's nothing on here that I'm, I'm really upset about. You right, know? right. But if Venom was on there, mm -hmm. Venom 25 going digital, me and you are having a different conversation. No, because I'm losing my crap too on that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I'm going to rephrase this question. If Daredevil. I, I, yeah, forget that. Yeah, exactly. Right? If Daredevil 19 or 20, whatever it is, mm -hmm. if that's on this list, you and I are having a different conversation. This is true. This okay. is true. But I, I would have to also be at the mercy of what I'm, I'm saying is a good thing. Yeah. Because if Daredevil dips below that mark to where it's not really profitable to have it out there anymore, then that's a book that would have to get cut. <laughs> and I would be pissed about it. Yeah. You know? But I, I, I do think that, you know, bearing some things digitally uh, is a good thing. Because uh, it, it kind of bolsters that market as well. Yeah. And, and I think that if you want to get new comic book readers involved, I think especially with the younger generation, uh, I think digital media is going to be what's going to grab them in uh, rather than the physical copies because most of them are on their phones. They're not going into a comic shop and buying them. Yeah. So having some stuff out there more digitally to choose from may be a good thing. Uh, and so I'm, I'm trying to keep a positive light in this. Uh, and it's something that I think that, you know, we, we need some change inside of this. We need some mix-up to happen uh, in order for our hobby to evolve. Otherwise, it stays stagnant and, I, you know, I don't want this thing to die. Yeah, let me let me do this real quick here. What's that? Dear <laughs> May 27th. Guess what, Bob? Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm uh, done with the show, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, um... Like I said, when I saw it, it was kind of disappointing, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. Um, because I do look at it as a first step for them. Uh, I think the reason why they're doing it is because, obviously, they don't have content coming out. Mm -hmm. This is a way to put out some content sure. to keep people kind of involved. Uh, but the statement that they came out with say that we're not going to make physical copies of this book. That's kind of surprised me because yeah. I could see them releasing the digital. Mm -hmm. And then down the line, when the shops are open, because really it has a lot to do with there's no shops that are open. There's no physical shops for the most part that are open right now. There's a lot of curbside pickup and mm -hmm. it's just not the same market and stuff you know, that there is. Right. Um, so that's why a lot of content's not coming out. But they want to put something out so they keep the ball rolling a little bit. Um, but to know that they're not going to do physical copies of these books, it, mid mid series like like you said you're a completionist you want to have the whole set uh, you ain't going to have that option i'm surprised that they did that and didn't say like hey 
down the line when shops are open, we'll go ahead and release these books, you know, to shops and you can order them. Or you can order them straight through us or something like that so you can complete your collection. They're not huge sellers, I get it, you know. But what if they become big sellers? What if they look at this and people are, are, are looking for content right now? And they can't get their hands on it. And all of a sudden, Ant-Man sales go up by 100%. Or all of a sudden, uh, sales of Hawkeye Freefall go up 100%. Because it's digital and people just want stuff. And Marvel says, oh, wow. Maybe we should focus more on this market. Maybe digital is now is the time to kind of do the digital thing. We've always kind of held back. The response hasn't been there for it. But it's a different time. You know, people are aware of social distancing and all that and here we're only a few feet apart whatever but uh you know maybe this is a catalyst to make them jumpstart their thoughts and maybe venom's on that list next week or daredevil's on the list the week after and then that's the last thing i want to see and you asked me a question you said how come i'm not uh putting these books on the preview list that we did earlier right right and uh the main reason why the preview list i do is uh, to for people who watch and it's to help support comic shops for sure. their customers this putting these books on that list does not help the comic shop one bit this is true I agree with it that. takes money away from the comic shop mm -hmm. and it takes the money and puts it directly into Marvel which is fine I understand that they they're, have every right to make some money but this cuts out every single mid middleman that there is whether it be Diamond, whether it be your local comic shop, the only people who see the revenue from digital copies are the creators and Marvel themselves. There's no reason they can't lower the price as well. That's also something that's on the table. That was actually a, when they first announced that they were going to do digital comics way back in the day, um, they were going to have a cheaper price and the comic shops fought back. The comic shops like, no, you cannot do this. It will undercut what we're trying to do when we're selling the physical media for a dollar or two more. So they succumbed to the comic shop's wishes and kept them the same digital price for the time being. Obviously, their sales are different things, apps, and you can get. So, right. But it's a little bit scary, to be honest. And uh, I think we've said many times before, you know, the comic book market right now and the comic book market five years from now, as far as new content, how much of that is going to shift to a digital format and that's without what's going on right now, the right. catalyst that might jumpstart this thing. And to see Marvel's first statement really come out besides saying, yeah, Mar comics might be coming out in a certain month. This is actual physical thing. I can put a date and say these titles are available on this day, but they are digital only. Right. right. And that is not something I wanted to say when Marvel started to release comics again. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I, I hear exactly what you're saying. And, you know... Uh, one of the things that um, you know I I want to let you know is is that you know I do receive pretty much the whole library of Marvel digitally and um, so I inadvertently you know I only grab a few actual physical copies off the shelf anyway yeah uh, because if it's not a title that I need to carry then I don't have room for it sure and so I can still read the content I can still you know uh, help support that way but the physical copies there's only like four Marvel titles that I get yeah you know and and so I just want to tip my hat that way um, it, it's a convenience for me but you know I'm also getting that because I'm also reviewing copies sure and uh, there are a couple other uh, publishers who are letting me do that as well and um, but you know going forward I, I, I don't want to have the local comic shop hurt I don't want to see that at all yeah um, but in getting things rolling getting things you know starting to open things up differently uh, I, I'm hoping perspectives change so that maybe we can move forward in such a way that gets everybody into a place of being able to make what they need off of it. Yeah. One of the things that should have happened so long ago, and this is a whole different topic, but I'll just throw it out there. One of the things that should have happened so long ago, it is beyond me why comic shops have to pre-order books, right? I mean, you have to, you know, they have to buy them. Yeah. You know, they should be able to do what they used to do, which is to be able to get a number of these copies, sell what they sell, and send the rest back, right? Uh, for them to have to put the money out the way that they do puts them in a, a 
very, very precarious yeah. position. And that needs to change. Yeah. That needs to change if this is going to move forward. Yeah. And, and I'm hoping that some mix up inside of this to say, hey, we're going to start doing things differently starts to move things in a direction that helps the LCS and helps the publishers at the same time. Yeah. Well, that's one thing why Boom is so popular at comic shops, because Boom has that option for all their books. Mm -hmm. You can, if you don't sell them and need to return the books, they will do that for you. Mm, right. And that's because of that publisher themselves. Now, we hit on that uh, topic not too long ago, um, the reason why you don't see comic books at uh, newsstands or like convenience stores anymore is because at the time they could return those just like they do magazines they tear the cover off they send them back they get a credit uh diamond took over and that's no longer the case exactly you know and there's, well, there's much more to that i mean i'm just scratching the surface sure 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 but that they used to have that option it's just not there anymore luckily like i said boom does give that option to the retail stores and they are you know right up there with the I mean, if you go to a new comic shop and they'll say, who's your favorite publisher? A lot of them are going to say Boom Studios right now because they're taking care of the comic shops. Right. And, you know, so I enjoy their books regardless, but the other things that they do behind the scenes is great too. Yeah. Um, we want to hear from you. What, what are your thoughts on Marvel going digital? Um, we saw two different sides of this to where DC decided to go a different route yep. to release their books, go through a different uh, distributor to put those out in comic shops. And Marvel comes back a week later, and they are releasing digital books. So yeah. Two very different takes on it. I want to hear what your guys' take is on both what DC decided to do uh, with going through a different uh, distributor, like mm -hmm. Midtown Comics and stuff, and they're putting out a handful of books, and what Marvel has decided to do, which is go digital only for the time being for these titles. And like I said, let's hope this is it. Yeah. Let's hope this is it. There is a very solid chance that Daredevil is added to this list. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, look, look, look. You know, one, one of the things that, you know, is in the is in the topic of conversation that, you know, we have to mention is the fact that if you move forward in, in, in any which way, somebody's going to lose out somewhere. Yeah. You're damned if you do, damned if you don't, no matter what the situation is. Yeah. And, you know, of course, being a fan, you know, I'm probably the one that's going to lose out first. There you go. Right? And... Uh, I really hope that we come to some type of place where it's it's the damage is minimal, but it's good for the hobby going forward. Yeah. That's my sincere hope. Yeah. Like I said, leave your comments down below. Let us know what you think about this. We'll discuss it in a little more detail next week, and we might have some more information to talk about as well. Hopefully, we'll get some more, and like I said, hopefully there's not more books added to that list. Yeah. But let's go ahead and shift. We're going to read some of the comments from uh, what people left us from last week's video. Uh, these are about uh, basically some comic shop stories. And we're going to try to stay positive, you know, because we kind of, kind of got some bad news about that Marvel digital stuff, at least yeah. to me, maybe not to him. But, <laughs> but uh, let's go ahead and uh, jump into reading some comments here. Okay, and I have my first comment right here, and this is from none other than the Downright Nerdy Podcast. Do you watch your show? I have, I have not seen it for a while, but I have watched it. You should watch it. It's really good. He's got the dude on there. He's a lot of muscles, and he's got his lady on there. She's a very uh, nice-looking lady. Mm -hmm. Very cool. They, li they like <laughs> they like the our cat. Nipples the cat. <laughs> they love my cat. And Nipples is awesome, man. Nipples is, she's right there. Okay, how's it going? <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, he said, great seeing you guys back together again. Missed you too. One thing my LCS did just last week and continuing into this week is in place of new comic book day, they opened the front door of the shop and offered bags of free books if you bring a few canned goods for the local food bank. These guys are always trying to help the community and kids with events and projects. They always seem to relate to comic books or characters to make it a little more fun. Shout out to Cape and Cow Comics. That's awesome, man. That is awesome. It's really cool to hear, you know, I mean, they're doing this right now. You know, when now's the time to do something like this, sure. you know. And, uh, you know, you get some free bags of comics for donating to canned foods. I actually brought some canned foods into a comic shop one time. I didn't realize they were like two years expired. I felt kind of bad. <laughs> so I went to the grocery store and bought a bunch more. There you go. And brought them in for the <laughs> donation. But uh, I think that's really cool, you know. I mean, I mean, the small town comic shops, or maybe not small town, but small business comic shops, which mm -hmm. mostly they are, they really do help out the community. I mean, right. uh, the small businesses are the ones that help out the community the most. Absolutely. They, they, they post flyers in their shop. They, they go the extra mile. They tell all these things because they're living there. They're part of it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's neat to see something like that. And it's kind of nice to read a comment where they're, you know, 
something good about a comic shop. Absolutely. You know, I, I, at the end of my coffee and comic show, uh, I always say the same thing. Support your local comic shop. And the reason why I do that is not just because, you know, it's a place where I can go get my comics, but what you just said is exactly right. A yeah. lot of these are your true mom and pop shops. They do help out the community. They're a large part of their community. And uh, it, it, that's a good thing. Yeah. And to hear news like this uh, of an LCS doing that type of thing, uh, I, that just blesses my heart. So yeah. that's awesome. That's man. very cool. You are up next with uh, William O. All right. William O says, hi, guys. Enjoyed this video. You both always make me crack up. And with the situation going on, it's always great to have a good laugh. <laughs> Bueller, your Iron Man story was really messed up. Uh, but did you ever uh, get your hands eventually on an Iron Man number one? You guys were making me a little nervous, though, because you were both touching your faces. <laughs> Please be careful, <laughs> both of you. <laughs> I myself have a couple of relatives that are in the front lines fighting this thing. Two of them were fighting it in downtown New York, and one of them got sick, went home, and had to self-quarantine for 15 days, and then went back to the front lines. So please be careful, and thank you for making me laugh. Will. Uh, well, a few things in there. Yes. Uh, I, uh, first thing, I never did, I never have gotten the Iron Man number one. Mm. It still has eluded me to this day. I always hold out hope that I find something like that in like a dollar box. Right, right. Or the garage sale or something. You know, I, I kind of, you know, it'll happen. It'll happen. It was meant to be. The second thing is, and I, I um, our uh, social distancing, Bob is a very big gentleman. I am actually six feet in front of him right now. <laughs> it's an optical illusion. <laughs> I love it, man. <laughs> I'm still on my diet. I just want to make sure you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's optical illusion, man. But uh, you know what? Um, I, I touch my face all the time. I do I'm too. so guilty of doing that. Yeah. And uh, you know, when I go out, I've been wearing masks and, and stuff. You know, I have a really cool mask from like uh, Destiny, the video game. Yeah. Uh, the, the Knights of Old sent me one or whatnot a while back, and I actually now have a reason to wear it. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'm taking the, the precautions that you need to. I know Bob is, yes, you know, and stuff. And uh, we feel pretty comfortable because we're both pretty isolated. Both we're, isolated. Both we've quarantined been. for like over a month. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there's always that risk. And we're, we're honestly, we are putting each other in risk right now. Right, uh, but, uh, but I think it's minimal. It's a calculated what, risk. Yeah, and he, like I said, I'm. It's more like ten feet from him. To be honest. With you. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, thanks, pal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it. I got the next one here. The last one. I only got three. This is from uh, Punk Scraps Comics. I think that's right. It says, "Glad you guys are back. My LCS owner is a great guy who will often let me go through the recent comic collection purchases first. That's awesome. That is awesome." One day after doing so, he quoted me a good price. I paid him and I was almost out the door when I noticed a pristine first print copy of Batman The Killing Joke. I asked how much he wanted for it. He looks at me, looks at me and says, $5. My eyes bugged out and I said, you know this is a first print, correct? And he said, yep, for you, $5. That is customer appreciation at its finest. That's really cool. Wow. I mean, uh, for one, you know, getting the chance to go through some books before they hit the shelves and stuff, you know, before they're, they're priced or whatnot, you know, which is really great. You, mm -hmm. you, you always get a good deal. And I've had the opportunity to do that a few times. That was awesome. And for two, the, the, the customer just real, or the, the comic shop owner just appreciating this customer. So, you know what, you know, here's a hundred dollar book, whatever that sells for, for five bucks, you know, no big deal. And, uh, that's an awesome way to take care of your customers, man. I mean, Absolutely. not everybody does that. So, uh, Punk Scraps Comics has a pretty cool shop that you always do. That is pretty awesome. You know, there there are a few shops out there that that will do that. Um, I there is a local comic shop uh, out here in Portland. I'm not going to mention the name, but um, they gave me a pretty killer deal uh, because I helped them out. I got about nine. Uh, I got about three hundred dollars worth of stuff for about ninety bucks, which was really cool. Yeah. And uh, he's like, "Hey, man, I'll, I'll just give it to you for this price because you helped me out so much." I thought that was really awesome. I love love hearing stories like yeah. that. Yeah. That's that's those are good comic shops, and those are the ones that I I, I feel bad for right now. Mm -hmm. You know, because things are are tough, and I really hope that those are the ones that uh, people recognize, and when the time comes, the doors open, we're able to, you know, you know, go to these places yeah. and. 
buy some stuff and we do and we tell our friends or we buy some gifts or whatever we can do and uh, but those are exactly the type of comic shops that need our support absolutely I'm all for it man very cool so let's go ahead and jump to our final five yeah okay and these were mine so I'll take those down go ahead you're up all right uh, this next one I got Batman Year 3 which is uh, issue number 436 has your name on the back it does have my name on the back uh, <laughs> let, me, let me just show this just so everyone knows real quick little flash <laughs> by the way I did not write that myself. okay sure uh, yeah yeah uh, then I got a, a What If number 38 and uh, it's got actually three stories in there one of them including Daredevil nice then I got Punisher Warzone number one the cutout cover I've always loved that cover and then uh, we got Batgirl number 34. And then Infinity War number one, the iconic cover there. And that's nice. my final five. Very cool. Your name is on the back of that I, one, too. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got my final five, and these ones were, were free comics. Nice. Because uh, SourcePoint Press was doing a free comic book week, and you could pretty much order whatever they had. And they would just send it to you, just paid for shipping. So I paid shipping, was like nine bucks. Mm -hmm. And I got about 20 books. Nice. Uh, there were some that were already gone and taken, uh, but for the most part, I got the ones I wanted. So I'm gonna share those. And not only that, but they showed up today on a Sunday. That's that's even better. So that was really cool. <laughs> um, there you go. Uh, this is the Dark Collection One. This is a uh, like a square bound book, so it's a little bit thicker. It's kind of cool. I don't know a lot about these, but you know what? They looked interesting, so I yeah. picked them. This is called the Rot, <laughs> the Rot Number One. There you go. I've heard good things about that one. Yeah, mm -hmm. Touching Evil. I think I've heard about this one. This is Number One, Touching Evil. Uh, the Rejected Dead Girl. This looks kind of cool, kind of spooky looking. This is, uh, I believe, Number One, or maybe it's a one shot. And then I got Floppy Cop. Apparently, he's floppy. Uh, number one, I think I got the first three issues of that. And they were all free. All you had to do is just go to their website, pick out. They had new books every day. You just picked out whatever you wanted. If they had them in stock, they sent them to you, just made them shipping. So, right. nothing wrong with that. It was kind of their take on free comic book day. Right. Since that never happened. Sure. And they did free comic book week. I think it was over a weekend and stuff. Did you see that at all? I did see it. I did okay. see it. But Source Point Press, thank you very much. Yep. Uh, that's pretty awesome that a publisher will do that for us. Very cool. All right, everybody. That's kind of it. You know, that's kind of the show. We kind of talked about some different stuff. Like I said before, uh, next week we're going to hit on that uh, Marvel Going Digital some more. We want to hear from you guys. Very important su uh, subject, and a lot of people have some great takes and opinions on it. Sure. And we want to hear from you, because like I've said in the past, you never know who's watching the, the show. And the more we can voice our opinion to make a change or affect something, you'd be surprised, um, like I said, who does watch and who does listen. So, right. All right. Well, Bob, thank you so much. Appreciate you coming by. Why don't you thank tell me about your channel real quick? Absolutely. Uh, my, cha my channel is Everything Comics. Um, I was able to finally film another one of my coffee videos from the Refuge Coffee House yesterday, which was so good to be back. And uh, that actually dropped this morning. Well, tomorrow morning, it, you'll see it, it, it dropped on Sunday. We got it. We got it. We got it. <laughs> uh, but I do have a couple of live streams that I'm going to do. I got a haul video that I'm going to be doing this week. And, uh, you know, I'm just rolling things out kind of slowly. Sure. And uh, But tune into the channel. Appreciate the support. Um, yesterday I did announce all the thousand subscriber giveaway uh, prizes, which was kind of cool. And did you uh, announced the winner. I did. Did I win? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Next. Anyway, thanks for having me on the show, man. I really enjoy being here, and I, I've, I've, you know, missed being with you, and so glad we're back, bro. Very cool. Me too. Thank you so much, everyone. Appreciate your time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You guys know what to do. We'll see you next time. Bye.